Welcome back everybody. In this video we're going to talk about the exponential functions and uh, transforming exponential functions, uh, comparing exponentials to transformed, and we'll also look at the graphs and see exactly how that works. Um, if we look here at the top, the base exponential function, f of x equals b to the x. b is going to be a constant, and x is a variable, and notice that variable is actually the exponent. That's what makes it the exponential function. And generally, when you graph these things, they generally will look like this, or they may look like this. Okay, but we'll look at a few examples. Something we should know about b, the base. If that b, that base number, is greater than 1, then that's exponential growth. Okay, it'll look like this function here for the most part. If b is less than 1, that's going to be exponential decay. The function decreases in value over the x-axis from left to right. It'll look like this function. Okay, now let's look at all the ways we can transform a function. We can multiply by a, we could add or subtract h, and then we could add k on the end. So you may see variations of this. Okay, so let's focus on this a here. Okay, if a is positive, um, a, that means the function is going to pretty much stay put. There won't be any kind of reflection or movement as far as um, a positive a. However, if a is negative, it's going to be reflected over the x-axis. So pretend a mirror image of it is over the x-axis based on the original function. Okay, now, we could have a could be greater than 1 or less than 1, and there's distinctions for that. If a is greater than 1, then we're going to say that the function is stretched vertically. That's a vertical stretch. Okay. And I'll just abbreviate vertical here. If a is less than 1, it is a vertical compression. Some call it uh, shrink, a vertical shrink or shrunken vertically. It makes the function wider, a little bit, some say fatter, as opposed to stretching it thin, you make it fatter, wider. Let's talk about this h. If you have h, if there's a plus h, counterintuitively, you actually would be shifting the function that many spaces to the left. Um, I know on the x-axis and horizontal movement, you would assume plus would be to the right and negative would be to the left, but it's actually the opposite. If you see a minus number, minus a number, minus h, that actually means the function has shifted to the right that many spaces. And finally, we have the k. Okay, that's the vertical movement. Plus k would be up, and minus k would be down, and that's sort of consistent with the y-axis. Positive values you go up on the y-axis, negative values you go down. Okay, so just to recap here, b, if b is greater than 1, it's growth. If b is less than 1, it's decay. If you have multiplying the exponential by some constant, a, if a is negative, it's reflected. If a is greater than 1, it's stretched. If a less than 1, it's compressed. If for the h, if you have a plus h, it's shifted to the left, minus h is shifted to the right, plus k is up, minus k is down. Let's see some of these in action here. I've got a couple examples. We're just going to talk about whether it's exponential growth or exponential decay. All right. Now, remember the base formula, the base function, b to the x, b to the x. And it looks like we have um, b here is one-fifth, and notice b is less than 1. Since b is less than 1, this one is exponential decay. And let's have a look at that graph, one-fifth to the x power. I'm just going to say y equals... Okay, look, as we go from left to right, notice the y values are decreasing. All right, in case you're wondering, I'm using Desmos, desmos.com. All right, let's turn that function off and look at the other one. The other one was 7 to the x power. Look at those y values. As we go to the right, the y values increase, showing exponential growth. Okay. 
Let's look at another couple examples here. All right, let me actually describe the transformations here. Okay, so here's our base function, y f of x equals 2 to the x. Let me rewrite it here so we can see that exponent a little better. And then look at what we're doing, the transformation. Negative 3 times 2 to the x. So we have this a number. A a number is negative 3. The fact that it's negative means it was reflected over the x-axis. And the fact that it is um, th the a is greater than 1 means it was a vertical stretch. Vertical stretch. So it'll look a little bit thinner than the original function. Okay, so let's, let's look at Desmos and see how that actually works here. All right, we have the base function y equals 2 to the x. Notice how that looks. It's in blue for us. Then the same function, but we have a negative 3. And look what happened. It's a little bit thinner. It's stretched out. It's reflected over the x-axis. And so it's like, yeah, the mirror image of it, but it's a little bit thinner. It's a little bit thinner. All right, let's let's take away that negative and look at it. <clears throat> Notice how we can see before the reflection over the x, it's a little bit thinner, narrower. It was stretched vertically, but as soon as we put a minus sign with it, it flips it over. And if we wanted to just delete that 3, look at that. That is just the plain old reflection of 2 to the x over the x-axis. All right, let's go back to the, how they look now. Okay, so there we go. Now we can actually see these transformations happening. Let's look at another transformation. Describe the transformation. 4 to the x, this time 4 to the x. There's our base function. Let me write it again here. And then here's that transformation. It looks like it's the same function. However, we just put a one-third in front of it. Okay, so not reflected over the x-axis, but it looks like it was vertically compressed. It got wider, maybe fatter, stretched horizontally. That's pretty much the only characteristic we can see. So let's start out with 4 to the x. y equals 4 to the x. There's that function. Same function, y equals 4 to the x, but we're going to put a one-third in front of it. All right, the original, the original parent function is purple, and then we just made a one-third uh, multiplied by it. It made it a little bit wider. Notice it stretched out wider, so the values go. It goes... It's like a compression. The function was compressed. All right, let's look at another one here. All right, and what I want to do is make sure everybody sees this okay. All right. So here's our function, our parent function, f of x equals one-fifth to the x power. Uh, first of all, knowing our b, this one is exponential decay, so we should say that, and we should have pointed that in the other examples too. Okay, this is exponential decay. Let's look at the transformation. One-third times one-fifth to the x power. And it looks like we did the same constant as before. It looks like we had a compression. All right, let's look at that on Desmos. So one-fifth to the x power. Okay, there's the parent. Notice the values, the y values decrease as we go from left to right. Okay, do that same function. But let's say in front... put a one-third. Okay, so the original the original function 
it was in red here, one fifth to the x power. If I do one third in front of it, I compress it. It got a little bit wider. Notice the white width, it widened out to the left a little bit, but it is a compression. Now, before I move on, something I want to point out, maybe didn't ex uh, talk about that, um, whether it's growth or decay. Notice our B number as on back here on number four. This would have been a growth exponential growth. Notice how the y values increase from left to right. Again, for number three, this one was exponential growth as well. Just want to make sure we see that and can distinguish that based on that value being greater than one. All right. Let's look at another couple here, our last two just going to compare and see what these transformations do. Okay, we're going to look at um, 3 to the x and a couple of transformations. Okay, let's look at one at a time here. Let's just get 3 to the x graphed. y equals 3 to the x power. So there we see how that looks. All right, and then on number 6 here, we want to just multiply it by 2. So you can see what happens to it y equals 2 times 3 to the x. So, first of all, they're both exponential growth. Multiplying, multiplying it by a 2 um, thins it out, makes it thinner, uh, stretches it vertically, as we say. Notice the original values here for the green line, and then the purple line is the vertically stretched version where you're multiplied by 2. All the y values get higher by a value of 2, so it's stretched vertically once again. All right, <clears throat> number seven, same function, three to the x, but this time we're gonna put a negative in front of it. All we're gonna do is put a negative. So let's go back to our transform. Let's, I'm gonna change this two to a negative power. And there we go. We just, all we're seeing here is a, for a reflection over the x-axis. Nothing else is done to it. Putting a negative in front of um, the original parent function flips it over the x-axis for a reflection. Okay, so that's a quick overview of exponential functions and transforming them. I hope this helped. Thank you for watching.